Hello, this is Isaac again, and this is the second part of this short series, and I'm just going to show you how I built this chat. I'm going to show you the whole source code. All right, so again, this is the chat, right? Chat, easy, and it's, you can see, it's being persisted by the database. So first, I'm going to show you step by step what I did in the Elixir part. All right, so first, I had to create a table, the message table, messages table. And this is, you see, this is the model, and this is it. And to create it, I only ran this command, right? Mix Phoenix, generate model, and message, messages, and just the body, right? This is all I did, and I created this, okay? Very simple. Then I have the user.socket, this is in the, in the channels, right? Because, you know, to make real-time communication, we're using channels in Phoenix. This folder comes already pre-made out of the box so I pretty much didn't have to do anything so let's go step by step what's happening here first of course I want to use the socket and so we have that we're defining the channels right so it usually goes by topic and subtopic so this is the topic and this is the top to subtopic in this case we have the you know, wild card so it will match everything like you see here room one room two room lobby whatever okay and after we define the channel and we have the transport, and the transport is in charge of dispatching the messages in and out of the channels, right? And it has adapters. Now, the default adapter is the WebSocket. If uh, there's a old browser that doesn't support WebSockets, then it can fall to long polling instead. So you're covered no matter what. But we don't need this for our purpose. Now here is the connect, right? So when the client tries to connect to the socket, well, in this case, we're going to approve anyone. But in general, uh, you could put here like uh, validation rules, right? So you can try to identify the user by a token. And based on that, you can either approve or refuse. Okay. You see, very, very simple. And uh, this is the ID. So here also you can, you can identify the socket by the user. And here you can have an example how to do it. So no fix is very explicit. You have comments on everything. And okay, so we have this. Now this one I had to create, right? Because you want the room channel. So I created this file. Again, this is, you know, we need to define a module so we can uh, add functions in it. So here, the alias, so the alias, what this helps us. So instead of me typing chat message all the time, I can just type message from now on. Okay, this is the, this is the reference to the schema. Okay, so we need to join the table, right? Now again, the client tries to join and it activates this function, right? So when the user tries to join from the client, you will soon see exactly how it works. Then it will activate this. So currently we have only run room, which is rooms.lobby, right? And we're getting a collection of all the messages if there is any. Now this, uh, well, actually I don't need this one. This is how you can print something to the console. Um, okay, so now we want to get the response, right? So we're going to render all the messages, right? And you see here, there's the view, the message view, right? So this render many, because it's a collection, so it's going to be 10 or 20. It's going to be rendered here. And all we're going to return is the body, because we don't care about the ID, and we don't care about the created at or updated at uh, columns. Okay, so we're going to render it here. And we're going to return the body only. This is how you only see the body. Okay? And handle in, just like it sounds, you know, we're handling in, you know, messages, right? So the client pushes a message and we need to handle it. So the way we handle it, well, we're going to insert it to the database. And on success, right, this is pattern matching. Again, you know, you need to learn Elixir to understand what it means, but. On success, all you need to know is that I'm broadcasting the message, right? So this is the name of the event. The name of the event is the new message. And the client listens to that event, right? Because if I'm going to put something else here, it's not going to work. It must be the same event name in the client and here on the server, okay, on the back end. So we're sending back the message. And this is just a reply that we need to send back. In this case, I'm not sending anything back, but we still need to be explicit and mention that we're not sending anything back. Otherwise we're going to have a little bit of a problem. So 
this is all it is in the server side, right? Very simple, very short, right? Now, this is the socket file. Now, you get it out of the box, parts of it you get out of the box. First, we need to import the socket file from the Phoenix, or there's a phoenix.js file. And then we need to create an instance of the socket. We connect to the socket. So socket is like a TV, right? So you open the TV, you're connecting, you're, you're connected to the socket, and then you can pick a channel, right? But maybe, you know, you, don't, you, you didn't pay extra, so you have only limited channels. So you can only pick the channels that you have, right? So first here we are picking the channel. Okay, let channel equals to this. And again, like I mentioned, uh, Phoenix allows us to write ES6 syntax out of the box. So we're picking a channel. This is just, you know, so we can, uh, in the view, we can show it to the user and then we need to join right so when I join here it goes for here right so I'm getting back the response this is a response that I'm getting back the collection and on success okay on success here there's a response and we're gonna render the messages if there is any if there's no messages then that's fine nothing's gonna happen right but this is the render messages function so we're gonna map over them and we're going to pin them one by one to the view, right? So we are connected, we are joined to the channel. So the user sends a message, right? So when we click enter, right? Key code 13, when we click enter, assuming there is a value, because if there is no value, right? If there is no value, nothing's going to happen, okay? And then we're going to push it. So Notice this is the name of the event, new message, right? It must be the same. So we're pushing the new message event with, of course, you need to pass the body. This is the backtick, again, ES6 syntax, and we're sending back the value. So on, you know, we push. So again, handle in, this is the event, you know, handle the new message event. We handle it, we broadcast, we broadcast it, right? So here, we are listening, right? See, on incoming broadcast message, will be appended to the message container. Okay, I, I added comments, by the way, so you'll understand exactly what it does. So on a new message event, we will append it, right? This is it. This is it. This is how simple it is. This is, of course, on the Phoenix side, right? Let's go to the React Native side. It's only one file. Oh, by the way, because I'm importing the socket from the Phoenix, right? So what I did, it's, uh, let's see where it is should have this file let's close this one diff p yeah here it is okay so it should be here the file let me go ahead and check it out mm -mm. yeah phoenix web static js this is the phoenix.js file okay we need to, t to copy this file right and paste it here, in which I did. Okay, I pasted the file here. See, you don't need to know what it does. You just need to pass it to your React Native project. And once you pass it, you import it. And then, all you gotta do is again, just like we did in, in, in uh, like just like I showed you, we create an instance of a socket, we connect to the socket, we pick a channel, and then on the React, uh, we just on the component will mount before the initial render starts. We're joining to the channel and we're going to also listen to the new events. And this is how it works, right? And we have, again, the render message function as a component. And oh, this is a really basic React Native. Uh, we have the text input and I added this uh, reference so we can clear, right? So we can clear the input when we submit. This is where it happens. Again, I added also comments right here. But this is it, right? And this is the stateless component that will render the messages but you know you saw that it works but this is all it of course it, when it will get complicated you'll probably need to add redux uh, I, I just didn't want to add redux for a couple of lines of code but i mean i, I don't know how I, I never tried it with other languages but for me <laughs> this is very easy as you can see the source code is very short right pretty simple to start and and for example uh, i'm just going to show you this you can set you, you can have multiple handle in events so here on the client i can push new message event but let's say i can i can also push user types event right so user type 
and then we will handle it and we will you know just like sometimes on a chat you see that johnny is typing now right so this is how it usually works so we're pushing that event also right so you can imagine how you can develop on it and add more features making it more robust and even the authentication part you know just, uh, phoenix has tokens built-in tokens that you can use to verify the user that's very simple so now that you've seen this i really hope first of all that you liked what you saw if you have any comments please comment below and i really believe that if you combine these two great technologies you can build amazing apps things that you know just a couple of years back you it will take you a lot of time to do it right look rick native makes you so productive out of the box and this phoenix makes you so productive out of the box and you combine when you combine two productive tools the result is great and i like what i see okay let me know what you thought about it have a great day